Um, members, can, can I wel welcome all members of the public to this meeting this evening, the annual meeting of East Cambridgeshire District Council, and to those members of the public and press watching the proceedings on YouTube. If the live stream does go down, we will adjourn the meeting and attempt to re-establish that link. Can I also take this opportunity to welcome all returning members and new members to this meeting? Um, also, I've had a request from Karen. Can you make sure when you are speaking that you speak to the mic so that it can be picked up by um, the, the um, live stream? Otherwise, the, the, the people watching at home may not hear what you've got to say. Thank you. We, with no further ado, I'd like to ask um, Canon James Garrard to lead us in prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Um, it's been a privilege, a pleasure to um, work with Alan and his predecessors as chairman of the council. And this year, of course, has been marked by more than the average number of major events and services in the cathedral, um, as we have marked the death of the queen, the accession of the king, and most recently, the coronation. I have no brief as to how to lead the prayers, so I'm going to do what seems best. Um, first of all, they will be short, which I hope is welcome. Secondly, they will be specifically Christian, of course, but one of the things that we in the cathedral, and I think more widely in the diocese, have taken as a spur from the coronation itself is to commit ourselves to work harder and better at developing our friendships with fellow um, faith partners in the city and more widely. So that's something that we will be looking to do as a priority for ourselves in weeks and months to come. So there will be prayer for remembering the coronation and a prayer that was said at the um, service that was held the night before the coronation reminding ourselves too that this is and of course this is a big thing for us at the moment in the cathedral this is the 1350th anniversary of St Ethelreda the Queen of Northumberland but Princess of East Anglia who had returned to this part of the world which she'd been given by her first husband as a wedding present or a dowry and um, we are now marking in various events um, in the middle of next month particularly the Archbishop of York will come to um, a big service to mark the anniversary of 673 AD when she first founded a monastery here on the Isle of Ely, that wedding present she received. And then finally, there'll be a prayer, um, two classic prayers, um, which will be tied up with a prayer for all of you, uh, those who are serving, serving the needs of other people and serving as counsellors. So let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we pray that you will bless our sovereign Lord King Charles and all who take authority under him, that they may order things of wisdom, equity, righteousness, and peace to the honor of your name, to the good of your people, your church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gracious God, in company with the King, we rededicate ourselves to your service. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you and your kingdom, that here we may have your peace in the world to come, see you face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And in remembering St. Bethel Drida, to mm -hmm. say the prayer, the collect that's used for her feast day. God, who did bestow such grace upon St. Bethel Drida that she gave herself wholly to the service of her people, and your true religion. Mercifully grant that we who commemorate her faith and constancy may likewise serve you faithfully in all our days. And finally, by your guiding, come to the glorious fellowship of the saints through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. And so in praying for the council, for its officers, for returning and newly elected councillors for this city and every place that East Cambridgeshire serves in a part of the county. We give thanks to those who've offered their services. We pray that you will bless them, 
encourage them as they serve the needs of the whole community. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour and further us all with your continual help, that in all that we do, that may be begun, continued and ended in you, and we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a final prayer based on the phrases of the great Saint Augustine of Hippo, perhaps the most influential saint and writer of the whole Western Church, bishop in what modern day Morocco, Algeria rather. God, who art the light of the minds that know thee, the life of the souls that love thee, the strength of the wills that serve thee, help us so to know thee that we may truly love thee, to love thee that we may fully serve thee, whose service is perfect freedom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, James, for that. I, I know you're going to stay for a, a short while, and then, but you're obviously welcome to slip away when, when you want to. It is my sad duty, members, to advise you of the death of um, former councillor Walter Bevington, who was the independent district councillor for the Ely North Ward from 1991 to 1999. Um, and I know councillor Kane wishes to say a few words in remembrance of councillor Bevington. Thank you, Chair. Walter Bevington may have been born and bred in Blackburn, but he became a true man of Ely. He moved here with his family in 1967 to become the headmaster at Ely St. Mary's Church of England Junior School. For over two decades, he guided the youngsters of Ely through their early education, giving them firm foundations for their future lives. He was always fair and kind and earned the respect and indeed the love of both pupils and staff. After retiring as headmaster, he was elected to Ely City Council and to East Cam's District Council, representing Ely North. And in 1993, he became mayor of Ely. Councillor Bebbington stood and served as an independent councillor because he felt this allowed him to work closely with both sides for the benefit of Ely and East Cambridgeshire. Walter was committed to working for the community and happily roped his family into the cause. His son Peter remembers the very sore feet from the campaign trail and remains treasurer of the Paradise Sports Centre, having been persuaded to take on the role by Walter 25 years ago when Walter was the council's representative to the Sports Centre. Walter also enjoyed the planning committee and was keen that the spirit of Ely and East Cams was preserved whilst recognising the need for progress. Walter Bebbington will be much missed by many in Ely, not least his wife Barbara, his three sons and wider family. I'll end by summing him up in the words a resident said to me, Walter Bebbington was a thoroughly good chap. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Kane. Um, can I ask Council if they'll rise for a minute silence in remember of, of Councillor Bebbington? Thank you, members. So we now move on to the um, formal agenda and item one is public question time. 
and Caroline's just looking to the box to see what we have. Um, I, I, the, the, the first question is from Peter Bates. Is Peter with us this evening? No. Because um, the email actually says he wasn't able to attend. I just wanted to make sure he hadn't turned up. Um, so shall I read that question out? I'll, I'll read the question out. And then obviously um, um, the question is, is, is CAM's Climate Action Network is pleased to see that finally two of the planned 24 electric vehicle charging points in Ely and Stowham are now working, but is concerned that East Cambridgeshire District Council is not installing them fast enough. Um, one, what is the next, what is now, sorry, the revised deadline for all 24 EV charging points to be fully operational and all appropriate signage fully installed? According to an ECDC press release, they were going to be installed by late March, by last March, sorry. Two, is the council going to work with the supplier to ensure that local residents and visitors will be able to reserve a charging slot to ensure that the limited number of EV charging points that are available will be charged, will be used efficiently? The labelling on the EV charging point seems to suggest that this is possible. Three, as there is now a 40% increase in EV registered vehicles in 2022 compared to 2021 across the UK, what plans does the council have to increase the number EV charging points across the district? And will its plans include rapid EV charging points, 25 to 99 kilowatts, and ultra rapid EV charging points, 100 kilowatts plus? That would encourage tourists and business people to stop off in the district and spend money to, with, to, with local businesses. It is noted that West Suffolk has plans for 100 EV charging points and Cambridge City with plans for about 360 on top of their existing EV charging points. Four, East Cam's Climate Action Network is concerned that there appears to be significant delays in getting the commercial EV points becoming operational at the service station north of Soham. They have been installed for more than two years but are still not working. Local EV car owners are being told that the service station owners are still waiting for ECDC to give them permission. Can the council investigate this to find out whether this is the case or not and why this commercial company is failing to deliver its EV charging service which would be useful for local residents and visitors to the area? And five, can the council provide full details of how it is taking advantage of all the UK government and combined authority funds that are currently available so as to help develop the EV infrastructure across the district? That is the question. I suggest, obviously, there's a lot of detail required in there. I don't know if you want to answer that or... Yeah, I'm ha happy to answer that, Chairman. Thank you. Um, and thank you to Mr Bates for his question. And we'll make sure that um, these responses are published as part of the, part of the minutes. Um, so in relation to the question number one, uh, which was about when will all the charging new charging points be operational. So uh, the Barton Road and Newnham Street charging points uh, are due to be fully operational by the end of June. Uh, in the Clay Street charging points in Soham, we're unfortunately still waiting for UK power networks to reconnect uh, the points due to the um, incorrect single phase supply having been installed. Uh, we don't yet have a date for this. We're at the mercy of UKPN, but once this has been done, the remaining works can then be completed. Um, and in relation to um, ensuring local visitors will be able to uh, understand whether there's availability or not, um, residents and visitors will be able to see if the charging point is available by using the app, which will be available. 
Um, and in relation to um, increasing the number of EV charging points across the district and, and other plans, uh, one, of the, one of the proposed actions that we have in the forthcoming environment plan, which comes to committee very soon, uh, to um, in on the 19th of June is that the council will undertake a program of electric vehicle charging initiatives and that will include uh, improving information on our website um, about electric vehicle charging in the district assisting parish councils and residents to find grants to help install electric vehicle charging points themselves uh, and obviously bidding for grants to install more EVCs in our own public car parks. Um, and in relation to delays in commercial EV points and the specific queries uh, about the SOAM service station, um, I, I can really just inform that planning permission for the installation of EV charging bays and associated power connections at SOAM um, BP at the Shade uh, was granted on the 2nd of October 2020. Um, and then we were asked about whether the council can provide full details of how we're taking advantage of um, government and combined authority funds being available. Um, and it, I can say that the council um, has been working regularly with the Cambridge and Peterborough combined authority um, to produce an alternative fuel strategy to speed up the switch to electric hydrogen and other renewable fuel vehicles. Um, and the alternative fuel strategy is planned to be formally adopted as part of the combined authorities overall strategy uh, at the board meeting coming up on the 31st of May um, and as mentioned above officers will continue to work with and start working with parish councils and residents um, to find grants and to help install uh, charging points and bid for grants to install more charging points um, on our own public car parks. Thank you Chairman. Thank you Councillor Bailey. Um, the second question, well, at the moment, what I've got in front of me is more of a statement. It's from Stephen Thompson, Haddenham Parish Council. Um, wants to have the opportunity to introduce myself and our clerk and make a few comments. Obviously, it's a question, but if you can come forward to the mic, um, please. Yeah, thank you. Right, thank you for... I won't take long. Thank you for letting me... Um, it was a question. There was a question mark on the end of it. Um, so my name is Stephen Thompson. Um, I was recently elected as chair at Haddenham Parish Council, and I just wanted the chance, I know some of you already, but I just wanted the chance to introduce ourselves and say that we are a, want to be a proactive, friendly, approachable parish council who are very keen to improve road safety, um, measures for youths in the, in the parish, and lots of other things. We've got lots of plans on at the minute. You might know that we recently installed a 20 mile an hour limit and we've been very successful in keeping the uh, vehicles down to that to that speed with various means. We had some opposition to that and, and quite often we get thrown the two papers which are available nationally and people say they don't work, you can't enforce them. And we've proved that you can because we've got data from the signs which I'm writing up in a paper that I'll make available and I'd like to send it to you so that other parish councils can follow suit and they don't have to reinvent the wheel. So that was a positive. So I just had a, a few comments as well, because you may have seen, this is Tor, our clerk at the back. We've been to the, um, the last three or four meetings and I just had some observations, some positives and negatives. The first one was um, my ex-wife had a scale of things. Um, it started with silly and then went to stupid and then it went to ridiculous. And then it went to utter, utterly ridiculous. And I was usually up at the top, right? So the thing that I'm going to say next was utterly ridiculous on that scale. And I was talking to a councillor a few months ago who had been a councillor for a long time. I won't mention which one. And they said that there was a councillor on the other side of the, the other party who's never spoken to them in several years. And I just thought that wasn't very productive or inclusive. And furthermore, the councillor said that if the other councillor was in the corridor and saw this councillor coming, I'm not using pronouns either, then they would dodge into the toilet. Um, and it goes hand in hand with if you look at the room, it looks like you are, you know, something out of Gladiator or Braveheart. You've got the inventory and the archers and it's very adversarial and it's not very inclusive. And for members of the public, we want to see you working together more. So that was just a, you know, you've got a chance of a new term here. I would urge you perhaps you could look at how you lay the tables out, for example. That was just an observation. And finally, and we go down to ridiculous, not utterly ridiculous. Um, the other one was um, 
When an observation from a member of the public, which is me, when one of the councillors asks the opposition councillor or the, the other party councillor, that's the wrong word, a question, it would be polite and courteous to, to watch them and listen to them rather than tapping away at a keyboard. All right, that's just an observation that I've seen on both sides. It's not one side or the other. It's just a bit of courtesy because, you know, you, you're all there on our behalf and it would be good if you sort of work together. Um, there, there seems to be a lot of grenade throwing, that was all. But it's not all negative. Um, we've come out of these meetings saying how great they are and we like them very much. And these name tags are great. We've taken that on at our parish meetings and they work really well. So thank you for letting me speak. And we want to be a proactive parish council over at Little Hackenham. Thank you, uh, Mr. Thompson. It's, as you say, it's more of a statement than a question, but um, that, it, it's good that you're, you're attending the meetings because obviously the more people you know, who do attend the meetings and get involved, that's what I think what all 28 of us would want. Um, but thank you. So that concludes public question time. Um, I now move on to election of chairman for 2023-2024. Um, and we have, as the agenda paper will show, we have two nominations, um, one for Councillor Mark Goldsack, proposed by Councillor Anna Bailey and seconded by Councillor Julia Huffer, and Councillor Gareth Wilson, proposed by Councillor Lorna Dupre and seconded by Councillor Charlotte Kane. Obviously, the voting will be done by by secret ballot um, and I, I believe Maggie's got the um, ballot papers to to hand round.
Thank you. Um, I've now got the results of the um, vote for chairman. Um, Councillor Gareth Wilson received 13 votes and Councillor Mark Goldsack received 15 votes. So I hereby announce that um, Councillor Goldsack is elected as chairman of the District Council for the next year. And that's the last action I have as chairman. Thank you. Try that one. Let's try that one. So I, Mark Goldsack, having been elected to the office of Chairman of East Camshire District Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. I'm happy to sign. Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching the chain around. It's not the phone gap, so. Thank you. Excuse me. Okay, thank you for um, the opportunity to uh, be your chair. My first uh, duty is a vote of thanks to the outgoing chairman. So if anybody would like to speak at this point, um, uh, Councillor Bailey first, please, Anna. Thank you, Chairman, and uh, congratulations to your good self. And uh, I just want to say a huge thank you really to uh, Alan. I've always found him to be uh, a very fair chairman. Um, I've not always enjoyed being on the other end of his rulings, I have to say, uh, but he was always scrupulously fair and obviously always correct and, and, and always right. Um, and as uh, Canon James Garrard alluded to earlier, uh, it's been a term that's been marked by royal occasions for, for Alan, some sad and, and some happy. We had the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and I, I was uh, very pleased to join Alan where we planted a um, tree for the Queen's Green Canopy in Brinkley uh, with some, some school children from Borough Green, uh, where Alan is the, one of the school governors. Um, and we met Princess Anne when she came to bless the new bog oak table, the very old bog oak table uh, in Ely Cathedral. Uh, and then, of course, we had the uh, sad death of our, our late Queen, uh, which was followed uh, rapidly at the same occasion uh, by the proclamation of King Charles III, which was at the west door of Ely Cathedral. Uh, and of course, since then, we've had the had the uh, lovely coronation very recently. Um, and I understand that Alan attended the Royal Garden Party, which I know is a wonderful occasion. I hope he, hope he enjoyed it. Uh, sorry to the new chair, because I, I'm not so sure it will all be quite as exciting as that. <laughs> um, so, but um, thank you, Alan, for your really excellent service. Um, and the date behind us on the board uh, can now be filled in. And there you are for, for posterity. So thank you ever so much, Alan. It's been, um, I think you've been an excellent chair. And uh, thank you so much for your service. Thank you, uh, Councillor Bill Hunt. Bill, please. Thank you, Chair. I'll be very, very quick. I'd really just like to say well done and thank you to Councillor Sharp. I, I, I feel he's been an example to us. And I think he's also managed to balance tolerance, humour, correctness and fairness 
all in one person, which is quite remarkable, really, because most people either excel in one and fall down in the other. But Alan's managed to keep a balance. And I think he's set an example, which I hope the new chair is listening, because I think it will be <laughs> quite a job to better the, the one of your predecessors. So if, if you could chair, uh, use Alan as a yardstick. And if you can come out in one, two, three, four years' time, uh, with a with more praise than him, you've done very well indeed, and good luck to you in your new venture. Thank you, and I'd just like to add my own thanks uh, to uh, Alan for everything he's done. I think on the civic front, uh, there can be nothing in probably recent memory to what Alan has had to go through for the council, and he's done it with a pride in uh, wearing this very heavy chain. He's he's done it representing not just everybody in this room and everybody watching, but actually everybody in our humble little part of the world. And uh, I thank you very much, Alan. And um, they are indeed uh, large shoes to follow. So thank you very much. Um, with that, um, Tracy, we have a little gift, a little uh, memento at the end. You gonna pass it on? You hold the <laughs> That's it. I'll put those down there. Diana gets the <laughs> scroll. Um, I'm going to ask Alan just to invite Alan to just say a few words. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Mark, Anna, Bill, for the comments. Um, I, I'm going to be very brief. I, I don't want to say too many words. Um, but I do want to thank, um, and she's sitting at the back, Lynn Smart, for keeping my diary up to date and telling me where I needed to be at the right time and the right place. And also Susan Lee, who was there, obviously, when, when, when Lynn was not on holiday. Um, Bill touched on... A hard act to follow. I had Liz Every to follow, and I thought Liz chaired the meetings really, really well. And she went through a difficult time because she was there when we were quite often in lockdown with COVID. We, we were doing Zoom meetings and everything else. So I, I, I certainly don't think I lived up to Liz's um, performance, but that's another, that's for others to judge. Um, I would like to thank John Hill and the team for helping me conduct the meetings because without them, there were times when we, we had challenges as to what um, the um, constitution or where we went from. So I thank them for their advice. And just touching on what I said about Liz, um, when I, I, I took over the chain of office right at the end of April 2021, and my first meeting was sat around where Ian has sat in a Zoom meeting um, because we were still on Zoom. We then had the tour of the district where we went to the more teams. To Little Port, but we then finally came back to the Grange. So it's been a, not not a, a straightforward year or two years. Sorry. As was touched on, I was very honoured to be involved in the public participation of the of the new king. Obviously, very sad occasion that that the Queen had died, but it was wonderful to be involved in that public ceremony, and obviously. Um, it will probably be the only one that I'll, I'll live through, I'm sure. <laughs> well, hopefully it will be <laughs> in some ways. And also greeting the Princess Royal and Prince Andrew to the district. Certainly that was very um, wonderful. So in closing, I'd like to thank members, all members, returning members for their help in conducting the council meetings. Hopefully I got most things right. Um, and I would like to wish the new chairman well in his in the office. Thank you. And just before we leave uh, item three on the agenda, in case you're wondering exactly where we are, um, I would like at this point, if we could please make a note of thanks uh, to immediate past members that are not here uh, at the new um, gathering today. Um, and that doesn't matter 
uh, from where from where the independence, whatever, we, we've been served by some wonderful people and I thank them all for their time and efforts. So we're going to move on to item four. Thank you, Alan. Move on to item four, apologies for absence. According to my maths, I don't think you've got No, any. we're we've got a full compliment, Chairman. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Long may it continue. So we're now going to move to item five, which is the election of vice chairman for 2023-24. There are two valid nominations. We have Councillor David Brown, nominated by myself, seconded by Councillor Bailey, and nomination for Councillor Christine Whelan, nominated by Councillor Lorna Dupre, seconded by Councillor Mark Inskip. The voting will be done in exactly the same way as for the chairman, and we'll pass it on to the people who do that now. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have the votes have uh, uh, counted and verified. And uh, Councillor Whelan has 13 votes, Councillor Brown 15. So duly elected to the role of vice chairman for 23-24. Councillor David Brown, if you'd like to join us, please. Well done, David. Yeah. 
Does he have yes. to read the yeah, yes, that? Yes, that's it. Let's put that on. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Councillor Brown will also uh, read and sign the oath. Not without his glasses. Not without his glasses. I, David Brown, having been elected to the office of Vice Chairman of East Cambridge District Council, declare that I take that office upon myself and will duly and faithfully fulfil the duties of it according to the best of my judgment and ability. Jump in. I welcome you to the chain gang by giving you this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that concludes item number five. Chair, sorry. Can I say a few words about? The outgoing vice chair. I apologise, um, uh, Councillor Sharp. Of course you can. Yeah. Alan's just going to say a few words about the outgoing deputy chairman. Yeah. Thank you. I'll be re relatively brief. I just wanted to say a few words about um, the outgoing councillor, um, the outgoing vice chairman, Councillor Daniel Schumann, who didn't restand really for election. Dan supported me well in the two years that I was chairman. Um, he didn't get to many of the events because I managed to cover most of them, to be fair to him. But those that he did, he undertook with great um, aplomb. And that, knowing Dan with his skills and um, an attitude, he, he did very well. So I'd like to wish him well um, in the future and thank him for his two years of office. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sharp. Um, OK, we'll now move on to item six. Uh, of the meeting of the agenda. Um, we're on to declarations of interest, uh, to receive declarations of interest from members or any items on the agenda in accordance with the members' code of conduct. If you have any, can you please indicate? Okay, there are none. Uh, item seven is the minutes of the meeting held on the 21st of February, 2023. Is there anybody, any reason, can give any reason why I can't sign these as a true record for those that were here? No, nope, that's fine. Thank you. Um, item eight is we're now going to the district council election results. It's just for noting. For noting. Yeah, it's, it's an item just for noting. Uh, I'm not going to read them out. Uh, I think everybody can read the document if they haven't done so before tonight. And uh, thank you for everybody that took part. Thank you. Item number nine, chairman's announcements. I bet this will be the only time this uh, coming uh, municipal year. I've got one. And that announcement is, can I please ask you all to stay in your seats at the end of the formal meeting so that we're in place for the mini meetings of the formation of the, um, the service committees? I think I made that yeah. clear. Thank you very much. Um, number 10 is to receive petitions. None, None received. Number 11 is notice of motions under procedure rule 10. None received. None received. I like this pace. Manchester United kicking off tonight. We've got a chance. <laughs> number 12 is to answer questions from members, if any. There are a number of questions that have come in. And we will just take them in the order of this. Yes, please. Okay. So the first question is a question from Councillor Lucius Velicott to the leader of the Liberal Democrat group. Call upon Councillor Velicott. Thank you, Chairman, and good evening, colleagues. I'm looking forward to working with you all. I can tell the Council with confidence that residents in Surm South voted rather overwhelmingly to oppose the Cambridge congestion charge, which the Liberal Democrat campaign refused to oppose outright, and for other common sense plans like keeping council tax low and car parking free. But I note with concern that Council Dupre's Liberal Democrat group, to my knowledge, and that's many residents, uh, conducted no district council campaign activities in Surm South or Wiccan, but did conduct a fair deal in Surm North. Could Councillor Dupre please confirm to my residents why her group sought to listen to the views of one half of our town, but not the other? 
Um, I'll just ask this, just as a motion of protocol as well, uh, that there's no discussion needed on this. And that you, if you are asked a question, you have the right to answer it. You also have the right not to answer it and to refer later. So, uh, Councillor Debray, would you wish to answer? Thank you. Chair, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome Councillor Vellicott to the Council and to thank him for his question. I'm not certain that members' questions is the place to discuss how local parties conduct their election campaigns. And I need to remind Councillor Vellicott that in my ward, his own party failed to muster a full complement of candidates for the local elections on the 4th of May, denying Conservative voters the chance to cast both their votes for their chosen party. But I'm grateful for his encouragement for the Liberal Democrats to campaign even more energetically against the Conservatives in his ward, and glad that we have quickly found a proposal on which we can both agree. Councillor Vallecott's party took 49.8% of all votes cast in the District Council elections in Soham South on the 4th of May, hardly overwhelming, and certainly less than half. In fact, across East Cambridgeshire, fewer people voted Conservative in May 2023 than in May 2019. More people voted Liberal Democrat in May 2023 than in May 2019. And more people voted Liberal Democrat in May 2023 than voted Conservative. Residents in East Cambridgeshire voted by a majority against the Conservative government, the scandals, the infighting, the sewage in our rivers, the unaffordable increases in the cost of living, the collapse of our NHS. They also voted against the effects of Conservative policies locally in our district. The continued unlawful and dangerous parking, the unswept streets, the chaos with the bins, the low level of ambition for environmental action, the lack of independent advice services, the unwanted crematorium at Meeple, the failure to work collaboratively with neighbours and other tiers of local government in the best interests of East Cambridgeshire. And despite the attempt by the Conservatives to confuse residents about their having a say through these elections on the congestion charge, most residents were not fooled. They understood full well that the councillors whom they were electing to this council on the 4th of May will have no say in any decisions about arrangements for, for sustainable travel in Cambridge. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dupre. The next question is a question from Councillor Mark Inskip to the leader of the council on voter ID. Councillor Inskip. Uh, thank you, Chair. On the 15th of May, uh, the former leader of the House of Commons, Jacob Rees-Mogg said, parties that try and gerrymander end up finding their clever scheme comes back to bite them. As dare I say, we found by insisting on voter ID for elections, we found people who didn't have an ID were elder, elderly and they by and large voted conservative. So we made it hard for our own voters and we upset a system that worked perfectly well. What data does the council hold on the impact of voter ID in East Cambridgeshire? In particular, how many individuals were turned away because they didn't have a valid ID? How many others does the council estimate were deterred from turning out to vote on the 4th of May by the voter ID requirement? And did the voter ID, uh, ID requirement contribute to fewer people voting Conservative in May 2023 than in May 2019? Thank you, Councillor Inskip. I'll pass over to Councillor Bailey as the leader to respond. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you to Councillor Inskip for his, uh, his question. Um, citing, you know, national national issues rather than local. But um, in fact, here in East Cambridgeshire, 14 people across the district were unable to vote at the polling station because they did not have ID. Uh, I worked that out to be 0.03% of the votes that were cast in the district council elections. Uh, I honestly feel it would be absolute folly to try to estimate the numbers that might have been deterred from voting because of it. No one can possibly know the answer to that question. Certainly my own experience on the doorstep was that voter ID was not the issue that it was exercising people in these elections. Um, and in East Cams, the data suggests that actually voter ID wasn't a material factor in turnout because, in fact, turnout was up in 2023 compared with 2019. Not by much, but it was increased. Um, and turnout was up in 79% of wards, so 11 out of 14 wards had increased turnout. And actually, the average number of Conservative votes per candidate increased by 3% in 2023 over 2019, so we actually 
uh, increased our average number of votes uh, compared with last time around. So I don't think it is right that uh, the voter ID issue uh, affected Conservative voters, uh, as his question suggests. Um, it is clear to me from the data, if you look at it really carefully, that the most important factor actually uh, in voter turnout is the level of activity and engagement by candidates, uh, as well as something about, you know, the local issues that people care passionately about, and that was clear to see. I particularly want to thank the comms team for their successful away awareness raising campaign, um, which, in my view, resulted in very, very high levels of awareness of the need for voter ID, you know, and did result in that very low number of people who, who weren't able to vote in the end 14 across the district. Um, and it is a matter of indisputable fact that voter turnout increased. So I, I thank them for the job that they did. Um, and we certainly took part in, in trying to make sure that uh, people were aware of the need for voter ID. Grateful though I am for their concern, I think the Lib Dems would do well to analyse their own election performance rather than worrying about the Conservatives. Looking at the seats where votes were lost and comparing 2019 with 2023, the Liberal Democrats lost a total of 1,139 votes in seats where they stood candidates, whereas the Conservatives lost 770. And the Liberal Democrat vote share decreased in 2023 compared with 2019. Thank you, uh, Anna. Thank you very much. Uh, if I could now go to the next question, which is a question from Councillor Caroline Shepherd to the Chair of Operational Services Committee. Thank you very much, Chair. In the Environment Plan adopted nearly two years ago by the Council's Operational Service Committee, on 14th of June 2021, this action plan states, the council has engaged with two national electrical, electric vehicle, EV, charging infrastructure companies, looking to determine potential for additional EV charge points on our own land, for example, car parks. And Barton Road and Newnham Street car parks appear the most viable and investigations continue. Last Saturday, well, Saturday the 20th of May, all parking spaces for EV charging in Barton Road car park were occupied by petrol or diesel fueled machines. Meanwhile, the charges in Newnham Street car park have still not been commissioned. This left no council car parks where EV drivers visiting Ely could charge their vehicles. It is three and a half years since the council declared a climate change emergency or a climate emergency why, therefore, is Ely still so unwelcoming to EV drivers who choose those vehicles because they are concerned about the climate? And I include myself amongst them. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shepherd. I will explain that uh, the Councillor Huffer will answer this, but I have noted that Councillor Huffer has got a little bit of laryngitis. So please bear with us. He tries to answer the question. OK, thank you. Okay. Councillor Bailey has agreed to, to read it on my behalf because I'm not sure it's going to make much sense. Thank you. And thank you to uh, Councillor Shepherd. I'm very pleased to uh, answer the question on behalf of the, the Chair of Operational Services Committee. Um, I think Ely is a, a very welcoming city. We, we offer free car parking, full stop. That welcomes people into our city from far and wide, from local villages. Uh, and from further away. That is a very welcoming environment and uh, I often get complimented for it and asked about it and people turn up looking for how to pay for car parking charges and they're very pleased to find that that doesn't have to happen. So we are an open, welcoming, engaging city, that is for sure. Uh, and of course, so are, so are in, in Littleport where we also offer the free car parking. But the, um, as, as uh, the questioner is aware, the electric uh, vehicle charging points are not yet fully operational. Um, and the marking of the bays and signage to indicate that the bays are EV charging points will be completed before the charge points are fully operational. And the completion date for both Barton Road and Newnham Street is by the end of June. And I mentioned the issues that we've got with Clay Street in Surm earlier. Uh, the council installed two dual 50 kilowatt fast charges at the council owned car park at the Hive uh, in Ely in 2018. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we'll be looking to do more through through the environment plan and the environment work. Um, and uh, I, I really just say, uh, you know, again, that Ely is an incredibly welcoming city uh, and a lovely place to be, which is why so many people fre frequent it. 
Thank you. Just know that that was uh, Councillor Bailey answering on behalf of Councillor Huffer, but thank you very much. Uh, go to the uh, ne next question, which is from Councillor Catherine Holtzman, please. Thank you, Chair. This council has declared a climate emergency in 2019. The built environment is responsible for 25% of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions. It is clear that decarbonizing construction plays a crucial role in reaching net zero. However, the council's local plan, which has been created in 2015 and has had only a single issue review in 2020, does still not address upfront emissions from new developments. It does not set appropriate standards for operational efficiency, let alone biodiversity and conservation targets. When is the council going to start developing a new local plan that addresses these issues? Thank you for your question. And the question is to the leader of the council, so Councillor Bailey, please. Thank you, Councillor Holtzman, and welcome to your seat in, in this council. Nice to have you here. Um, and thanks very much for putting in a question at the first opportunity. Um, in fact, yeah, the council uh, did declare a climate emergency back in 2019. I think we were one of the first in Cambridgeshire to do so. Um, tackling emissions from new development is clearly an important step towards net zero which we're going for by 2040 from direct emissions from this place um, and that's why uh, by February um, 2021 following public consultation over the previous year in 2020 the council adopted a climate change supplementary planning document uh, which helps guide um, planning and planning decisions in this authority. We were even quicker to consult and adopt a supplementary planning document on the natural environment, and which we did so by September 2020. And both documents are available on our website uh, and we're, we're advised um, prove very useful to persuade developers uh, to make significant improvements to their development proposals for the benefit of both nature and our climate. Um, and after declaring a climate emergency, we therefore uh, reacted quickly to put climate and nature related planning policies in place. Um, however, having policies in our local plan could provide even greater teeth to require the more reluctant developers to take action. Uh, and I'm pleased to confirm, therefore, that our forthcoming environment plan uh, to be considered by Operational Services Committee on the 19th of June will indeed include a commitment to commence preliminary consultation on what a climate related chapter for a new local plan should contain. Uh, this is going to put us in an excellent position to insert a climate change chapter in our local plan as and when the government finalises the levelling up and regeneration bill. Uh, and it is that bill that will enable councils like East Cambridgeshire to start the new style local plan, uh, which uh, I believe in, on current timing is um, sometime late 2024. Uh, commencing an old style local plan in advance of the new legislation coming would honestly be a waste of time and money, but work is, is progressing. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Um, the final of five questions. Is a question from Councillor Mary Wade to the Chair of Operational Services. Thank you, Chair. Um, on the 1st of June last year, the Council announced that it had opened the country's largest ever tree maze with the opening of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee Maze in Ely Country Park. The Council's press release highlighted the intricate walkways planted up with more than 5,000 native warm beam sap saplings. Today, many of those saplings are dead. Um, and the maze is overgrown by metre high weeds, including stinging nettles, making it completely unusable for visitors. How many of the 5,000 saplings planted last year have died and how many have survived? Why was an adequate maintenance plan not put in place when the maze was opened? And have any lessons been learnt from this failure? Thank you very much, Councillor Wade. And um, I'm assuming. Councillor Bailey is going to read. Councillor Bailey is going to read the statement on my behalf. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Don't be mean. Thank you, Councillor Wade, and welcome to to you to your your place at the council. Uh, and thanks for the question. It's estimated that sadly around half of the saplings uh, only have survived. Um, and in fact, adequate maintenance plans were in place at the time of planting. But I, you know, would remind everybody that we experienced an unprecedentedly hot summer. Uh, and a colder than anticipated winter and spring, which did mean that a different maintenance regime uh, needs to be considered. And this will need to be balanced with the biodiversity on the site. 
the Open Spaces and Facilities Manager is currently assessing the options available to deal with the issue in the short and medium term that reflects the flowering season and the biodiversity that is on the site because one man's weed is another man's flower um, and there is a lot of um, you know flowering that is currently taking place on that site and you wouldn't want to go immediately and chop it all down. Clearly we need uh, a new management plan so uh, future any future scheme maintenance plans will incorporate the likelihood of changing seasons uh, as it's evident that these changes have an impact on, on set management plans and that is uh, getting more and more difficult and I would just add chairman uh, from myself that um, you know our, our open spaces and facilities manager moved heaven and earth to try and make sure that those saplings uh, got through the very very difficult summer we were drawing um, you know take, taking large quantities of water on a very regular basis but sadly uh, as you've seen half of them didn't make it through but we will get it sorted out. Thank you very much. That concludes the uh, questions part for uh, item 12. So we're going to move on to item 13, which is the leader and deputy leader of the council, group leaders and deputy group leaders. Uh, for this, I'm going to introduce Officer Tracy Cooper, who's going to lead us through this. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> the report is for noting that you'll see there was a vacancy in the position of deputy leader when the agenda went out. That has now been filled by Councillor Julia Huffer. Um, so she becomes the deputy leader of the Conservative group and, by definition, deputy leader of the council. <clears throat> Thank you, Tracy. So as, as, as Tracy quite rightly points out, that's for noting only. So uh, we've noted and we will move on. The next one is item 14, political proportionality. I've been dreading saying that all night. Um, so if we look at this one... Um, <coughs> Again, I think, Tracy, are you going to speak to this? Yeah, there's not really much to add on this one. Um, obviously, we have to calculate the political proportionality. I struggle to say it as well each year. Um, and obviously, it becomes more significant in an election year. <clears throat> and the calculations have been done and the group leaders are informed. And it's just for the council to approve that. Or if they wanted to, obviously, you can pro pro propose and move an alternative but it requires a NEM convo, which means no one must vote against it if you want an alternative. Okay, then I will um, ask, do we have someone to propose this? That'll be me. <laughs> now, I'll propose that from the chair, and I believe that my... Happy to second, Chairman. Happy to second. So unless there are any objections or changes to that, then that's carried and we'll move on to the next item. Thank you. Sorry. Do we need to vote on that? I'm happy to have a show of hands vote. You should just go for a show of hands vote, please. Let's have a show of hands votes. Okay, and anybody against? Abstain? Not voting at all? Okay, thank you. We'll take them as abstentions, yeah? Chairman, can I suggest you call for the vote again, ask for hands in the air, and then we'll take an appropriate... Because I think some members may have slightly lost the I do apologize I didn't I don't mean to confuse anybody let alone myself so um what I would say now is that we're going to we have to propose and second this and I'm advised that we should take a vote on it so all those in favor of accepting this proposal please raise your hand it's agenda item for 14 uh that appears to be unanimous I think John, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the guidance as well. Thank you. Okay, that's moving on to item 15 then. Um, membership committees and subcommittees, including substitutes and other member bodies. Again, I'm going to defer to Tracy to lead us through this. Chairman, thank you, Chairman. We, you, I have circulated a revised Appendix 1 because there were some sw slight changes to the nominations for substitutes from the Liberal Democrat group. So that has been circulated. Um, so <clears throat> we're looking to approve the membership committee, subcommittees and member bodies as attached in the revised Appendix 1. Thank you, Tracy. I think everybody's clear on that. Councillor Bailey. Happy to propose, Chair. Beat me to it. I was just going to ask, is there someone to propose it? Happy to second, Chair. Councillor Huffer is going to second that. Um, in that case, we're happy to go to the vote. All those in favour of accepting this? <laughs> Come on, raise the hand. <laughs> yeah, well done. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. 
16 was slightly wrong. Yeah. yeah. So we're now going to deal with item 16A, appointments to the combined authority, in which I'm going to invite Tracy again. Thank you, Chairman. Um, subsequent to the agenda dispatch, we have had some additional notifications of changes to pr proportionality because of changes in the different constituent councils. There have been some crossing of floors and changing of numbers. Um, so as a result of that, one of our positions has moved from nominating a Conservative member on the Audit and Governance Committee to a Liberal Democrat member on the Audit and Governance Con Committee. Um, I have received nominations for the positions from the two, two group leaders. So if you look at 2.21a, the leader of the council and the deputy leader are going to be the council's appointees subject to agreement on the combined authority. The, the, nom the members nominated one from the Conservative Party and one from the Liberal Democrat Party to the Overview and Scrutiny Committee with the substitutes are Councillor Brown with Councillor Horgan as substitute and Councillor Dupre with Councillor Kane as sub substitute. I can't say that either. And finally, on C, the one member from the now at, at the altered proportionality from the Liberal Democrat group on the Audit and Governance Committee is Councillor Inskip with Councillor Shepherd as the substitute. Okay, well again we have to vote on that. I'm very happy to propose that from the Chair. Happy to second Chair. Thank you uh, Councillor Sharp. And again, come on let's get the hands up again, a show of hands, all those in favour of that. Thank you very much, unanimous once again. 16B is again Tracy do you want to introduce item 16b? Chairman this is the usual combined authority update report that we tend to receive each council meeting so it's really if members have any questions on any of the items in there. Okay so just particularly for new members these are copies of the reports from the combined authority for meetings that have taken place since we last met in full council here and you have the right now to ask any questions of our representatives at those committee meetings that sit at the combined authority. I'll assume by uh, no frantic activity, there are no active questions coming for anybody. Thank you very much. In that case, we will move on to 16, no, 17. And 17 is uh, actions taken by the chief executive on the grounds of urgency. And this is for noting anyway. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Okay, we'll move on then. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I'm going to pass uh, formally. I'm, I'm just going to ask you to stay in your places so we can go to the meetings. But for the sake of the next part of tonight's activity, uh, the formal meeting is closed at 7.10. And we're going to pass over to Maggie Camp to lead us through. Thank you, Maggie. No, I am, aren't I? Sorry. Right.
Many meetings. Uh, I'll take this in order as it's published in the agenda and uh, begin with the Finance and Assets Committee. Before we start into the agenda, when I call your name, could you please stand or raise your hand? Councillor Ian Bovingdon. Councillor Mark Goldsack. Sorry, I'll start again. Councillor Ian Bovingdon. Councillor Mark Goldsack, sorry. Councillor Bill Hunt. Councillor James Lay, Councillor David Milner, Miller, sorry, Councillor Alan Sharp, Councillor Lorna Dupre, Councillor Robert Pitt, mm -hmm. Councillor Caroline Shepherd, Councillor John Trapp, and Councillor Alison Whelan. Thank you, members. As this is the first meeting of the Finance and Assets Committee, the first item on the agenda is to elect a chairman for the ensuing municipal year. Can I have a nomination for the chairman, please? I'd like to nominate Alan Sharp. Thank you. Can I have a seconder, please? I'm happy to second that. Are there any other nominations? Thank you. As there are no other nominations, I declare Councillor Sharp as Chairman of the Finance and Assets Committee for the ensuing municipal year. I will now hand over to Councillor Sharp to take you through the rest of the agenda. Thank you, Maggie. Um, the next item we've got on the agenda, item two, is to elect a vice chairman for the ensuing municipal year. Um, and I'd like to propose Councillor Ian Bovingdon. I have a seconder. Happy to second that. I was just waiting to be asked. Are there any other nominations? No, in which case I declare Councillor Bovingdon elected as vice chairman for the ensuing municipal year. Thank you. Item three is the finance and ethics, um, sorry, finance and assets ethical governance subcommittee. Um, and on the agenda paper, we've got a gap for substitutes for both the Conservative and the um, Liberal Democrat group. Um, the substitutes for the Conservative group will be Councillor Anna Bailey, Councillor David Miller, Councillor Mark Goldsack, um, do we have any, or, or do you want to name those later, Councillor Dupre? I'll name those later. Thank okay, you. thank Consultation you. Group. Um, so from the chair, I can propose that we appoint the district, um, the, the seven substantive members and the three substitutes and the Liberal Democrats substitutes to be named later. I'll propose that. Do I have a seconder for that? Happy to second, Chair. Okay, thank you, Councillor Bovindon. Are all members in agreement with that? Thank you. Then item four is the Personnel Appeals Subcommittee um, to appoint three members to the Personnel Appeals Subcommittee for 2023-2024. I'm happy to propose that from the chair. Do I have a seconder? Happy to second, chair. Are all members happy with that? Thank you. And then item five is the East Cambridgeshire Bus Cycling Walking Working Party um, and to reappoint the Working Party for 2023-2024. The three Liberal Democrat members are Councillor Christine Colbert, Councillor Lorne Prey, Councillor Caroline Shepherd. Um, the three Conservative members will be um, Councillor Alan Sharp, Councillor Mark Goldsack and Councillor Ian Bovington. Are all members happy with that? Great, thank you. And then the last item on the agenda, this is on the, this is the revised agenda, which you should have a, a sheet of paper on, is to appoint um, a representative to serve on the Local Government Association um, <laughs> um, it's got to be submitted by the 7th of June, and I'll propose from the Chair, Councillor Julia Huffer. Do I have a seconder for that? Happy to second, Chair. Okay, thank you, members. That concludes the mini meeting of the Finance and Assets Committee, and I look forward to working with all members at, at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, members. We now move on to the Operational Services Committee. Before we start into the agenda, when I call your name, could you please stand or raise your hand? Councillor Christine Ambrose Smith, Councillor Martin Goodell, Councillor Julia Huffer. Councillor Kelly Pettit, 
Councillor Alan Sharp, Councillor Lucia uh, Velocott, Councillor Christine Colbert, Councillor Catherine Holtzman, Councillor Mark Inskip, Councillor Mary Wade, and Councillor Christine Whelan. Thank you, members. As this is the first meeting of the Operational Services Committee, the first item on the agenda is to elect a chairman for the ensuing municipal year. Can I have a nomination for chairman, please? Can I propose Councillor Julia Huffer, please? Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Thank you. As there are no other on nominations, I declare Councillor Huffer as Chairman of the Operational Services Committee for the ensuing municipal year. I will now hand over to Councillor Huffer to take you through the rest of the agenda. Thank you, Maggie. Um, I would like now to elect a Vice Chairman for the ensuing municipal year. I am happy to propose Alan Sharp from the Chair. Do I have a seconder? That's Councillor Ambrose Smith. Do I have any other nominations? In which case, then I declare Alan Sharp as the um, Vice Chairman of Operational Services Committee. And as there's no further business, I draw the meeting to a close. Thank you. Thank you, members. We now move on to the Audit Committee. And before we start into the agenda, when I call your name, can you please stand or raise your hand? Councillor David Brown. Councillor Kelly Pettit, Councillor Keith Horgan, Councillor Charlotte Kane, and Councillor Christine Whelan. Thank you, members. As this is the first meeting of the Audit Committee, the first item on the agenda is to elect a chairman for the ensuing municipal year. Can I have a nomination, please, for chairman? Sorry, I couldn't think of the button. Um, could I please nominate um, David Brown? Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Not a second, but I'd like to raise a point of order. <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd like your advice on whether it is uh, proper for Councillor Brown to be chair of the audit committee, because he spent the last four years as chair of finance and assets and the independent remuneration panel was quite concerned about conflicts of interest between finance and assets and audit, which is why you're not allowed to sit on both. Uh, obviously, we have yet to sign off the 2021-22 accounts, and that has been delegated by the committee to the chair, who would have been the chair of finance and assets when those were produced. And similarly, we will this year be looking at last year's accounts, which would have been the responsibility of finance and assets and the chair of that committee. So is it proper for Councillor Brown to come from chair of finance and assets to chair of audit? I'd ask you have to, have to sit back down while I um, consult with my um, deputy modern
Uh, thank you, Chairman. I mean, we've had a good look at the constitution and um, my advice to the council is uh, there is no longer, there is no, not a problem with Councillor Brown being um, elected to the audit committees. He, he is no longer a member of the finance and asset committee. Oh, sorry, in the, oh, sorry, the council there. And of course he can stand as chairman because there's no exclusion. In, in which case, is it appropriate to ask Councillor Brown some questions before we vote? No? Okay. Chairman, just for clarity, sorry, Maggie, just for clarity, we haven't yet got to the election of chairman and um, traditionally these meetings, are, uh, the business is set out as in the agenda. Thank you, Maggie. So we had an election for as, as David Brown as the um, chairman for audit committee. Yeah, if you really stand. Please. Sorry, sorry. <coughs> Sorry, members. So we've had a proposal for David Brown for chairman for the audit committee. Can I have a second, please? I would like to second that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Thank you. As there are no other nominations, I declare Councillor Brown as chairman of the audit committee for the ensuing municipal year. I will hand over to Councillor Brown to take you through the rest of the agenda. Thank you, Maggie. Item two on the agenda is to elect a vice chairman for the ensuing municipal year. And from the chair, I'd like to propose Councillor Kelly Pettit. I have a second that. And I would like to second that. Are there any other nominations? In that case, I declare Councillor Kelly Pettit as vice chairman for the coming year and declare the meeting closed. Thank you, members. We'll now move on to the licensing committee. Before, before we start into the agenda, when I call your name, can you please stand or raise your hand? Councillor Christine Ambrose Smith. Councillor Lavinia Edwards. Councillor Martin Goodell. Councillor Keith Horgan. Councillor Julia Huffer. Councillor Kelly Pettit. Councillor Charlotte Kane. Councillor Mark Inskip. Councillor John Trapp. Councillor Alison Whelan and Councillor Gareth Wilson. Thank you, members. This is the first meeting of the licensing committee. The first item on the agenda is to elect a chairman of the ensuing municipal year. Can I have a nomination, please, for chairman? I would like to propose Councillor Julia Huffer. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Yes, I'd like to second Councillor Huffer. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Thank you. As there are no other nominations, I declare Councillor Huffer as Chairman of the Licensing Committee for the ensuing municipal year. I will now hand over to Councillor Huffer to take you through the rest of the agenda. Thank you, Maggie. Um, I would like to um, propose Keith Horgan as Vice Chairman for the ensuing municipal, municipal year. Do I have a seconder? Yes, I'd like to second it. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Do we have any other proposals or nominations? In which case, then, I declare Keith Horgan um, as the Vice Chairman for the ensuing Municipal Year. I'd like to now move on to the item three on the agenda, the Licensing Statutory Subcommittee, um, to appoint three members, the Conservative members, Councillor Lavinia Edwards, Councillor Keith Horgan, and, and the Liberal Democrat member, Councillor Charlotte Kane. Um, do we have a substitute from the Liberal Democrats on the subcommittee? Or do you want to advise later? Thank you. I'm happy to propose from the chair. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Ambrose Smith, in which case I everybody content with the parties? That's carried then. The licensing stat non-statutory subcommittee. Um, the following members are Councillor Martin Goodell, Councillor Julia Huffer, Councillor Keller Kelly Pettit and the Liberal Democrat members, Councillor John Trapp and Councillor Gareth Wilson. I'm proposing from the chair, do I have a seconder? I would like to second that motion. 
in which case I appoint these members as the members of the non-statutory subcommittee. Thank you very much. That brings the meeting to a close. Thank you, members. And that brings us on to the planning committee. Before we start into the agenda, when I call your name, could you please stand or raise your hand? Councillor Christine Ambrose-Smith. Councillor David Brown. Councillor Lavinia Edwards. Councillor Martin Goodell. Councillor Bill Hunt. Councillor James Lay. Councillor Chika Akiwala. Sorry. Councillor Catherine Holtzman. Councillor John Trapp. Councillor Christine Whelan. And Councillor Gareth Wilson. Thank you, members. As this is the first meeting of the Planning Committee, the first item on the agenda is to elect a chairman for the ensuing municipal year. Can I please have a nomination for chairman? I'd like to nominate Councillor Bill Hunt as chairman of the Planning Committee. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? I'd like to second that. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Thank you. As there are no other nominations, I declare Councillor Bill Hunt as Chairman of the Planning Committee for the ensuing municipal year. I will now hand over to Councillor Hunt to take you through the rest of the agenda. Thank you. Um, I now have um, now select the Vice Chairman and uh, have I got any proposals for Vice Chairman? I would like to propose, <laughs> I would like to propose David Brown. Uh, as the vice chairman, I'm sorry, and I should be asking for a second. Thank you. Have we got any other nominations? No. So, so therefore, Councillor Brown is the vice chairman of that committee, and I don't believe there's anything else to resolve in this meeting. So, I declare this meeting of the planning committee closed. Concludes all the matters for this evening. Thank you very much for your time and energy, and we look forward to working with each other as we move forward. Thank you.